Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is your boy Salami and in today's video we're talking about Seven Days to Die. This game's just come out of early access after since 2013, so it's been a while. <laughs> but it's finally in version 1.0 and it's also got in Steam Deck verification, which means we're going to check it out. And um, I've been having a hell of a good time for a game that's been in early access for like 3,000 days or something crazy like that. Um, it's been... And I've never played it, never touched it, never looked at it. So the fact I've got into it now is hilarious. And it's actually really good, um, which surprised me. And performance-wise, it's really great. So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, performance, my recommended settings, and my initial thoughts on the game, along with some tips and tricks at the end that I would have liked to have known when I first started playing, but I didn't. Um, so... Let's get into it. So, going into this game, there is a few things we need to talk about. Steam Deck supported, with has got the big tick. So it is fully controller driven. You can use it completely with the um, D-pad and all that good stuff. But it also um, has kind of like the cursor control of like Destiny and all that with the little round thing you can move around the screen. So you're in a good place. And also because it's Steam Deck verified, it also means when you've got to write names or type something it will automatically bring up the steam deck keyboard meaning you don't have to push the steam button along with the x button uh, which is really nice so fully steam deck verified uh definitely makes a difference sorry if my camera is wobbling my cat has decided she wants to indulge herself with what i'm doing thanks remy um, so going over the graphical settings, I'll put them up on screen now and, um, you can copy them if, if you like, and we'll talk about what they are. So we're back. You may see the cat jump into the video, but let's go over some of the display settings. It does it. They're our native Steam Deck resolution of 1280 by 800, 1610. So fills the whole screen, which is really nice. Um, and the display settings are pretty straightforward. Now, the, I'm looking down at my Steam Deck while I talk about this, so sorry if uh, I'm like not paying you full attention, but I'll cut to footage or whatever. So anyway, continue on. Now, I do have dynamic screen resolution on here. This does make a huge difference. I've got it on scale, and I'm scaling the, di the dynamic resolution scale is 80%, and this is going to give us a nice um, flat, 40 FPS, which is what I've been playing at. In the footage you see, you're going to see a variety of uh, graphical settings, but what I end up on by the end is a solid 40 with some nice graphical settings um, included in that. So that's, and the way to get that that solid 40 is by using scale and 80% scale. I have V-Sync off, we don't need V-Sync. Um, I've got brightness at 50 and field of view at 65. Now 65 is pretty low, so, you know, pull that up if you want. Um, but the, the lower your field of view, the more performance you're going to get. Of course, I don't think I touched it. I'm pretty sure that's the default. I could be wrong there. So, you know, let me know if, if I've got that wrong. Okay, but going over to actual graphical settings, I've got it on. It's custom because I'm using a whole lot of different things. So AA, anti-analyzing, anti-analyzing. I'm using temporal. And I'm also um, got AA sharpening at 20%, okay? So and so if you're looking at the footage behind you and you think it looks pretty good, this is this is what you want to copy, okay? Uh, we've got texture quality at full. We've got the texture filter at high. We've got reflection quality at low. We've got reflected shadows off. We've got shadow distance medium. We've got uh, shadow quality medium. Particles 50%. Uh, view distance medium, LOD distance 50%, terrain quality on high, we've got water quality on high, 
We've got grass, distance on medium, object quality on medium, and occlusion on. Uh, we've also got bloom on, motion blur normal. People don't like motion blur. I, I personally like motion blur. That's a, that's a you thing. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. SSAO, I've got on. SS reflections on low and sun shafts on. Um, I didn't touch anything in the dynamic mesh options. I just left it as whatever the default was. And that seems to do the trick. Okay, so that's that's basically my over, that's my recommended settings. Um, and then after that, we are going to move on to my initial thoughts on the game. I've put about eight hours in so far, but I'm probably going to play a lot more than eight hours. And we'll, I'll just talk about what the game is and also my thoughts. And then followed up by I'll have a couple of tips and tricks that... If I, which will make your time more enjoyable in the game, put it that way. So without further ado, let's move on to my impressions. No, I, I'd be curious to look back and So see my impressions for uh, uh, Seven Days to Die but a really it launched high. on version um, 1.0. It's, it's been an early access good, for so like, long. Um, it's really the menu crazy screen me. still seems um, kind of... You know, I'm not they sure do what this job about. It's definitely... Like, go. I honestly... Uh, you feel I a little know. bit... I, I'd be like, curious to look back and see what it was back then. Indie, um, indie title. But it's doing quite a but lot with it. It launched on version um, 1.0. It's, it's pretty good. This game, like, which is crazy. Um, it's sold the menu screen still seem kind of... You know, they do their job, but it's, it's definitely... That's massive. Uh, you like, feel a little unbelievably bit... Unbelievably massive. Like, you know, The game has, like, a ton of indie titles. But it's uh, doing quite and well. RPG and RPG stuff too. With um, these just looking over some stats for this game, which is crazy. It's sold 16 million that. copies. Um, you can play his co op solo or online. It's, I would never play massive. online. Massive. It's like solo. Unbelievably massive. massive. I've not tried The game so has like a that. ton of survival but solos uh, and on. RPG and stuff too. And for Steam Deck, that's great for battery life too. Those settings there. I should um, mention, you can play it co -op, probably solo when you, to get that 40 fps i also online. put in it's solo co -op for me i've not tried co-op so i can't talk about that, that lock 40 without it but solos if you want to say man battery life and for steam deck that's uh, great for battery life too those no settings there um, um and i should mention so you should probably the, when you start the to game get that 40 fps i also put the depends on the map i would put limits on the easiest difficulty just to get started because i've never played this game in my life i've heard of it if you want to say that battery life so it was definitely like we take it slow and i've got 14 times and so there's that you start the game in the middle I, I guess it depends on the map. I went for the smallest and on the easiest difficulty just to get started because I'd never played this game before in my life. I'd heard of it but never had played it. So it was definitely like, we'll take it slow and I've died like 14 times in my first seven days in game. So I'm definitely not what you would call an expert player, that's for sure, but I'm enjoying every moment of it. Um... And you've got five biomes. I've seen you start off in the pine forest, which is all like quite green and luscious, and you've got pine trees, of course. And you've got you you come across your first trader, and um, you can buy stuff from him and sell stuff to him. And what I did was because it's also a survival game, you can build your base where you want. I built it basically right next door to the trader. It it didn't make sense to build it further away. Like I don't, I wouldn't what's the point of that you might as well have it close by to the trader and then you can you know if you need to go there you can get there quite quickly and then get out and go back to your base and go back if you need to get something else um there is a ton of crafting like there's over like 500 recipes which is in my eyes ridiculous but they have I, again i don't know when this stuff got added into the game but it's quite cool that you can click on anything you pick up and you push the Y button and it will come up with a list of, you hold Y and then you can push an, a button on the D-pad and that will be, you know, you know, use or inspect, blah, blah, blah. And one will be for ingredients, recipes, and you can see everything you make with that item, which I think is really helpful because I find with a lot of survival games that I've played over the last few months, 
Um, you just don't know what things are. You know, I don't know what this does, and it becomes quite useless. Uh, well, not useless, but you're like you're sitting with this item. You're like, I don't know what it does. So, whatever. Where with this, at least with the um, with being able to look at the recipes, you're like, okay. And then you can put that as your watch, as as your want to craft. And then basically it will populate little arrows in the world uh, with you know the things that you can pick up. Not perhaps the things that you have to craft to then craft, you know, like crafting within crafting. But for the basics, at least it puts them, it puts some little dots on the map with bo uh, bones or rocks or all that kind of thing, which is really useful. Um, yeah, uh, the building, base building is pretty solid with controller. I haven't had any issues. I mean, my base sucks, as you can probably see in the video behind you. Um, I really feel like starting again. Even though I've put eight hours into this character, I'm like, you know, I'll just start again. And now that I know what I'm doing, I might not waste so much time and energy on some of the crafting. Again, I'll talk about that in my tips at the end, as this is just my over overview thoughts about the game. Um, I was, again, just looking over the fact sheet here, they're talking about over 1300 unique building blocks and painting system along with over 800 in-game items, which is crazy to me. Um, and then one of the cool things with your the RPG aspect of it, of leveling up your character, is that you do get your... When you level up, you get about five... Well, I've been getting five experience points that you can spend in, the, um, in your perk tree, which you really need to do, because you can get some really good stuff in there, and it's really worth doing. Um, but also in the world you find books and you just read them straight away You don't need to carry them or take them with you You just read them when you find them and you will get unlocks to random skills from reading enough of these books So it's kind of cool. You might like there's normally like five in a tree But you might if you read enough of this the same book you will unlock say a, a certain like the fourth one down or something just because you've read the books so reading books and finding them is super important and I would highly recommend you go out of your way to read and find books because they make a huge difference to the way that you play the game in terms of the perks that you get. And some of the perks are really major and can make the game a lot easier. So it's it's definitely worth um, keeping that in mind. Um, again, looking over some of the facts that this game's given and the things that I've noticed in the opening thing here is they're talking about there's over 550 unique locations like roads, caves, mountains, valleys, towns, cities. Again, I haven't made it to a city yet as I've only been in the pine forest area for the first seven days because I wanted to get to that first horde, which we might as well roll into that now. So it's called Seven Days to Die, for no, not for no reason. On the seventh day, you... The seven becomes red, and then the at night it goes. It's like a storm blows up, and then the sun, uh, the moon goes red, and then you get attacked wherever you are. You then get swarmed by zombies, and you got to hold out. Um, and it's it's really cool because you've got seven days to get ready for that event, and then you've got another seven days. And on that next, it's supposedly every seven days it's going to get harder, um, which I think is kind of cool. And, and adds a little bit of extra to the game and whether you want to push out or if you want to like, how many days do you want to be doing missions for the traders? Which I've, I've only been getting a quest from the first trader. I'm assuming they also, they also lead to more quests from other traders as you venture out into different, because there's five different um, e econ like zones. I think there's a pine forest, there's the burnt forest. Um, there's like a deserty area and there's a... Uh, I think there's another two. I'm pretty sure there's five different biomes in total. Yeah, there's five. So, and again, I've only I've only been in the pine and I've looked, I've wandered very closely into the burning biome. Just a wee bit, but nothing too crazy. Um, and on top of that, I've been having a really good time. And I think one of the reasons I've been enjoying it too is that it's pretty chill. <laughs> When I say chill, it's, you don't need to pay attention, like, there's not, you don't need to worry about the story, you don't worry about cutscenes, and you can kind of just, like, play the game without, you can watch TV, or you talk to your partner, or, 
Um, you can just play it, but you don't need to have headphones in. Like, you can kind of just wing it. You don't need to be, like, super, like, I have to focus on this all the time to play the best. I mean, if you don't want to die, then sure, you might not want to do that. But for someone like me, I, it's great. I can still play it and talk to my partner at the same time and not worry too much. I can just, you know, poke some zombies or get some items. Or is, While we're doing that, I can go just chop trees for wood, you know? Like, it, you can kind of play it a little bit more chill uh, that I really like. Um, and then I haven't unlocked some of this stuff, but I know that they've got motorbikes and gyrocopters and and all that cool stuff but i again i haven't made it that deep in this is just my initial impressions and they're pretty good so let me know in the comments below if you've played seven days to die since it's been early on in early access or if you're like me coming in at version 1.0 and actually being kind of mind blown about how fucking fun this game is like it's crazy how much fun it is um so my, it is a yes for me it's steam deck verified which helps uh, really just for bringing up in the game in game keyboard and stuff you don't have to do it manually and um full full controller support i'm assuming it didn't have controller support for the longest time oh, well i think it's been on ps4 and ps and xbox for a while but i'm not don't quote me on that um and then finally we're going to get into tips and tricks after this so i will be back shortly So here's some things I took away from my uh, first time playing through Seven Days to Die that I think could come in handy for you. Uh, day one is just, you need to just gather resources. The great thing is the game does have like a little tick box like tracker thing and you get XP for completing the little missions like collect so many of this or do this, which which helps you get that initial start. So, you know, day one, focus on getting your basics like wood, stone, and plant fibers. You can do that just by punching things, and that will let you craft essentials like a stone axe and a primal. So the primal bow is really important with the primal arrows, and you get the arrow feathers from the bird's nest. So really just loot and hit everything and see what you get from it. Um... And I know that can be annoying, but like, if you're not sure what it is, again, just go into your inventory and then click on recipes and it's going to tell you what that stuff is for. It, you'll be like, oh, I don't need this stuff till way later. I won't bother gathering it or I'll gather it anyway, but I'll put it in a chest back in my base. Um, so yeah, stone axe, stone shovel and a wooden club. But I prefer for my melee weapon is the spear because it gives you range. And if you get the upgrade through the perk tree, if you do the... Secondary attack, you can stun them and knock them over or slow them, which is really handy. So I would always go for the spear for my first, like my main weapon. And then you always want to have on you a club, uh, not a club, sorry, a um, stone axe for cutting trees and breaking stone or, or breaking down items. It's not always the best item as later on you'll get a wrench. And that is good for breaking down things like cars and electronics and stuff like that. So you'll later on you'll want a wrench and, a, and an axe on you at all times for breaking stuff. Um, that's my main. And the shovel is useful, but it's not as useful as the other two. Um, I normally just leave my shovel back at home, but if you want to put it on your bar, go for it. It just it's you know it's another slot taken in your bar, but you're not always going to fill it. Uh, next thing is finding a suitable base location. Like I said earlier on, my recommendation is to build it quite close to the first trader you go, you visit. Um, because he's right there and you can just go back and forth from him for spying, selling and everything in between. Um, I didn't do it, but if I started again, I would build my base like next to him. So then you could use his fence as well as one side as your of your base's defenses which just is one less thing you have to worry about um i don't know if that works like i haven't tried it but that's ticking in my head is something i want to try or another option is you get your crafting container which is your base outline 
you could technically put it in a house that's already built and use that and then just build a fence or uh, railings around it and use that as your defensive line and you want to use the wooden stakes they're a great first object I have a wooden line around you'll see in the video a wood like the wood don't use the um, use the wooden you've got two like base building items to start off with you've got like the building blocks and the wooden blocks so the, the, the building blocks are, uh, have way less XP, XP, way less hit points, but you can destroy them and replace them. Where if you build a wooden box, once they're built, they can't be moved, but they're way stronger. So I would use, for my interior, I just use the building blocks because they're quick and easy and you can quickly rearrange them as you go. And then I, I double layer it almost and then put the wooden blocks on the outside and along with putting the wooden spikes outside of them again and then walking around the outside of the perimeter stabbing things so they can't get in um and you also want to make sure you can stab things through the door because they're going to break through pretty quickly i found out on my first it was like wow they didn't waste any time so on the night of the seventh moon my idea would be you put up you just build like we we already had my entrance i should have put more um wooden spikes because then i can just take them down the next day after the fight has finished um or just go on the roof and put spikes on the ladder so when they try to get up or take the ladder down one or the other but they may destroy the base if you're not fighting them off so it's a give take relationship on that one but yeah, use wooden frames to block off the doors and windows, and then you can always upgrade them to be more durable after the fact, which you do by pulling the left trigger on the when you have the axe out. So keep that in mind. Spike traps are, yeah, you, great to start off with. Always use the spike traps. Now, food and water I had real trouble with. Um, I really had trouble with food and water. Uh, I don't know if I would do any better second time around i'd like to think so but yeah food and water i really struggled with um you get you really need to work on getting that dew collector which is you just need to level up i think and then it unlocks eventually after you do so much crafting um and then you get the dew collector and then the water that comes out of it is all dirty water so then you need a fire pit which i built but i didn't realize you needed to put the pot on it and then you can boil the water to cleanse it because there is a mod you can get for the dew collector which auto purifies it but i don't i haven't got that yet so you need to be able to purify it through the fire so keep that in mind that's how you purify water and then for the food side of it it's really weird like i only ever come across snakes there's meant to be rabbits and other animals which is why you need the bow to, to shoot them, get their meat. So if you kill a, a snake or whatever, keep feeding it with your axe and it'll drop like up to seven pieces of meat and then you can cook them on the fire. But it's like five pieces to make one cooked meat. Um, and I seem to always be hungry. I think I'm just struggling a little bit with the food side of it. Um, I know you're meant to be able to farm, but I'm not, I haven't worked out exactly how to do that. So if you, you're a veteran, please let me know in the comments below what's going on. Um, in the night times, what I've worked out is instead of going out at night and doing stuff, just stay at your base and work on your base at night and go out during the day. Um, and that's a better rhythm and because the monster I think the zombies are definitely stronger at night and more aggressive. So stay back at your base, cut trees, build your defenses, you know, do all the boring admin at night time and do your exploring during the day. Um, and you can always say stealth in this game, but I haven't really used enough of it, but I guess you could go out and stealth, but um, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, other things that have come up is just loot everything and look everywhere. You'll be surprised what you can loot. Um, you'll find like containers that'll say blah, 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 but you can't loot them. You need to break the seal on them and then loot them. So it's like, oh, okay. And there's like paintings and stuff on walls and buildings. Again, break them and there's usually stuff behind them. And so just keep your eyes peeled. You'll, you'll probably find more loot than you realize hidden behind other things. Um, 
one, a couple other little things that I'm going to point out here is on the map, when you clear a building, you can go to your map screen and you can put um, different markers down. So I've used, I use a cross for a building that I've cleared. Now I'm pretty sure loot respawns, but if you've done that initial clear, you can cross it off and say, I've, I've cleared this building properly. So you can cross it off. You can always go back there later, but all the good stuff should be already gone. But yeah, my idea is to make sure you cross off, go into the map after you do a building and put a cross on it, just so you know you've been there and done that. Um, and one thing I learned is if you do enough quests for the first trader, he will give you the schematics for a bike. And once you get the bike, your life will become way easier. Um, because on foot, it's bloody painful. So once you get that bike, and if you do another quest, you'll get a quest to go to the next trader in another zone. So if you do the quest for the trader, you'll it kind of like pushes you around the map anyway. You can go out there yourself, but you might as well just use that trader to their full extent and get everything out of them. So, without further ado, thanks for watching guys, I appreciate it. I know this has been a bit of a long-winded video, I don't know if you'll make it all the way through. And for a newbie like me talking about Seven Days of Dice, for some of you that have been playing for years, you might be just laughing at me and, and let me know in the comments below if I'm talking out my ass. Um, but I feel like for someone that went in fresh with no idea what to do, it can be a little bit overwhelming, but we got there in the end. So I really appreciate it guys and highly recommend this for Steam Deck. It plays really well. Battery life is good. Graphics are good. 40 frames is really solid. Get into it. All right guys, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.